Hey guys, welcome back to the CARF L39 Skygate build video series. If you guys have any questions, comments, make sure you list them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you hit the subscribe button, also hit the bell and you'll be notified of new videos from this build. Um, also, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and thanks so much for tuning in. All right, guys, working on the, uh, the air brake next. Now, I glued these up last night, and uh, everything went together really, really well. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. I just took my Dremel with a uh, fairly narrow bit on it, one of the carbide bits, and this allowed enough width. Uh, there's a little bit extra width for the, uh, the fiberglass piece to, to slide in, so I just used it to roughen up the, the flat section, and then there's... Uh, there's actually pieces in the moldings uh, where to make the vertical. So everything fits together really, really nicely. There's a little, uh, there you can see it on this one, there's a little slot on the top of the larger size one, so it only goes in so far. And uh, everything just goes together beautifully. So what I did was um, get that all high sawed up, put the pieces in place, had the pivot going through, and then just use clamps where I could. Uh, just small clamps to hold those in place and they're uh, they're awesome the hole lines up just perfectly now and uh, everything looks really really good so that's glued um, next step is going to be to flip the airframe over <clears throat> uh, flip the airframe over and uh, work on getting these things positioned getting the holes the right size and uh, finishing up the speed brake the speed brake is kind of the next thing that's holding me up uh, because I can't mount the the tank, the main fuel tank, until I um, get the speed brake finished because otherwise there's no access to it. So, um, other thing was the um, no, actually that's it. So, anyways, uh, moving on to that step. All right, guys, so I got the uh, the cutouts all done for the air brakes. Um, the air brakes are inserted in place and they are taped. So the gap is very, very consistent around. Um, quite happy with the way that all turned out. So I used the stickiest masking tape that I had and uh, that is where we are at. So what I'm gonna do is flip the, the airframe over now and uh, see if I can get the, uh, the hinges all glued and uh, that'll be it for tonight and we'll let that set up and hopefully that all works out good. All right guys, I would definitely suggest doing the air brake before you put the, uh, the tank cradle in. It, is, uh, it was a real pain in the butt to get this all mounted. Okay, you can see a few things here. Number one, I've high sawed um, that side and that side. Now there is a aluminum uh, piece in the center. I'm going to high saw those uh, once these outside pieces have set up. And the reason I'm going to do that is because there's actually quite a big space, about this much, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch, um, eight millimeters or so, uh, in between the rod and the fuselage. So I might stick a piece of wood in there. Um, and that's also going to help strengthen up that fuselage piece that's right underneath this tank piece but I'll be able to do that once I have access with the doors open. So, But uh, once I have glued these two pieces, uh, the door will be nice and solid. Now just uh, one little note here is um, the aluminum spacer or outside piece, I've actually butted up to this side of the door hinge and that side of the door hinge. Now the reason I've done that is so that the door can't move side to side. Uh, the center piece is shorter and um, that's fine, but basically where those two things are positioned right now, that door can't move at all. So that's high sawed. I'm gonna do this other side, and once that's set up and cured, I can worry about the air cylinders and, and the stuff from the other side. Okay guys, air brake is all installed. Tape is off. I did have to open up these openings a little bit just to allow the uh, air brake to clear. Now I've gone and sanded the um, the fairing pieces, so these guys. Uh, these are the same as the wing, essentially, so 
you basically sand them nice and flat. You have to trim them off, same thing as the wings. And uh, now we're gonna do the same epoxy setup and stick some epoxy in there, uh, tape it down on the wings and let the epoxy drain down and um, glue it together. So I've used 12 minute epoxy with micro balloons installed and uh, these are all sanded. I've roughed up the area as well too, cleaned it with some rubbing alcohol and we are ready to get these uh, mounted. Now, one thing is the, um, <clears throat> so what Carf did is they shipped some vinyl um, for the Breitling uh, lettering and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all this work and then I'll be installing the vinyl afterwards. Just, I think it'll be easier to get it lined up and stuff, so. All right guys, the fairings have been installed. I taped them, but then I also added some weight to them as well too. Uh, there was just a little bit of epoxy coming through the edge. Same thing as the wing fairing, so I was able to get that off afterwards, not a big deal. But uh, that little bit of weight should help things out. So we'll let that cure, and uh, that's the step. Okay guys, we've run into a little bit of a problem. Uh, if you look at how many threads are exposed there, we have about two threads on the, uh, the air cylinder. Now in order to make this um, in order to make this work properly, that is the length we need. So if we thread it on any more, what happens is it doesn't close all the way. And even there, we're just a little bit um, open still. So that brings up a bit of an issue. Now the manual did come with this hardware and I'll show you. So the manual did come with um, these metal um, ball links. Uh, the problem with the metal ball links is there's not enough length there. So one of the things that would be really nice is if you look in the manual here, we've got these plastic ball links. And uh, if the plastic ball links was, were to give us a little bit more depth, those would work out a lot better. So um, I need to poke around and see if I've got any plastic uh, ball links. I, I really want to have the Carf ones as well too because they're, uh, they're a metric size. Not that that really matters, but I'll see what kind of options we have here. And um, one of the downsides of switching out that is the screw that goes through the um, metal ball links already has the right size uh, hole in the air brake. So this is a, a metric, an M2 screw, and um, so we'll have to see what we can come up with, but uh, that's definitely not gonna work. Okay guys, so I think I got it figured out here. Fortunately, we kind of know the length now of, of uh, what we need because of the cylinder. I've got it threaded on one thread, so it's easier to see this when they're standing up, but um, basically I've taken a metric, um, gosh, metric ball link that's plastic, uh, chopped a little bit off the end because it was a little bit too long and it was uh, interfering. Um, so it needed to go on further. So that's basically, I think, a decent solution. Now, uh, the one thing about the metric um, plastic ball links is if you look at the size difference of the attaching screw, it's significantly different, right? So we're gonna need to drill that hole out on the uh, on the pivot, hopefully we can still access it. This is one of the reasons, again, to leave the tank cradle out of the uh, of the airframe. Anyways, that's what we're working on right now. All right, guys. So the air brakes are all hooked up, other than the airlines. Um, everything worked really well. So I ended up using those plastic um, ball links. They worked good. You can see the angle there of the air brakes is identical. Uh, they both close and I have them set so they're just a little bit proud of the airframe. So with some air pressure, they should close nicely. Um, 
yeah, really, really happy with the way everything turned out. So um, probably am not going to do it uh, right away, but I at some point I'm going to have to work on the vinyl graphics. Um, so anyways, that's, that's there to do, but uh, happy with the way that all worked out. I think it'll look really, really good. I'm going to run the airlines here as well too, just because I think this airline will be able to run through the Velcro hole. Um, this airline, we might have to put a little indent in there. Now, one of the things I'm a little bit concerned with is the Velcro itself. Um, so if we were to run this Velcro through, there's really nowhere for it to go through. We can go over top of this middle structural piece, um, but I think it's going to be putting a little bit of pressure on um, the arm and the cylinder and stuff. So have to figure that out a little bit. That's definitely a little bit concerning. If that doesn't work, we'll have to um, kind of finish the Velcro here, finish the Velcro here so it doesn't interfere or go through the middle part. Um, what I mean by that is put the Velcro through and maybe glue it, wrap it around, um, something like that. So anyways, we'll figure that out. I'm going to run these lines next and uh, we'll see how that all works out. Okay guys, lines are all hooked up and uh, we've just got those protective uh, sheeting I put on here. So for this back one that goes over top of the former, I just took my Dremel and sanded a little bit of a groove in there. You can see uh, just for the... Uh, the Tigon tubing to sit in. Just put some Tigon tubing over top and over top the nipple and it's going to stay nicely and prevent the line from chafing. And then this back one I took a little bit of snakeskin cover and uh, that was really the only thing I could fit in between this groove. Uh, the Tigon wouldn't fit in between there. Uh, there's not enough spacing so but that'll do well. And uh, so that's the lines hooked up uh, to the air cylinders. So those have plenty of uh, space to come forward like that. And then we'll tee them off, and then they'll go to the uh, appropriate connection on the uh, on the uh, air valve. So uh, next thing I'm going to check is the um, is the uh, Velcro and see how it interferes or if it doesn't interfere with the uh, tank mount. Okay, guys, um, air brake is all done. Accomplished uh, quite a bit here, and uh, there, it's going to be hard to see this, but um, basically. Let's see if I can show you here. There we go. Okay, so this is the center section of the air brake. So you can see the uh, strut on the bottom part of your screen or the arm for the air brake. And then on the top part of the screen, the other arm for the air brake. So this uh, center section that you're looking at, um, that's kind of a floating part of the fuselage. So it's basically this piece right here. Okay, so that was just floating. The, um, as I showed you guys before, the pipe or rod that goes through was sitting up, up about quarter inch off that, uh, that piece of the fuselage. So what I did was slip a piece of plywood in there on the other side of this uh, piece of the fuselage and uh, then put some high saw to secure the rod. So that was kind of one of the last steps I needed to do. And uh, once that cures, the air brake's gonna be all done. I can see the airlines run there. I'm still going to put some covering over top of the uh, lines that go through the the former work, but uh, basically the air brake's all done to this point. Um, next thing I'm kind of working on here is this front gear mount. Um, now I had to do some sanding um, on both front portions of this, the rails themselves. The next thing I have to do here is you can see that. Um, there's quite a bit of interference going on in this whole section. So essentially what I need to do, I think, is sand um, this portion of this front former off and um, maybe a little bit of this U. And the reason for that is if we run this all the way forward in the channel there, um, there's just not enough room for that gear to actually mount onto the, uh, the pin. You can kind of see it there. Uh, there's going to be a bit of interference. So 
we need probably the space of that former in distance for this to come forward. So probably going to need to have this sanded down. I'm just going to do this part first. Um, that should be plenty, but we'll have to see what we're going to do here. Okay, hey guys, so I think I got enough stuff ground out. I think it's all set up now. Nothing's permanently put in place here. The nose is just uh, just floating. The gear is just floating. But I uh, got everything set up pretty good. There's going to be maybe a little bit of adjustments um, to this area. But uh, we're really close. So if I can show you this gear in action, I will. Okay guys, so what I had to end up sanding out was, I'll slide this out and show you, but with uh, the amount that I sanded, um, it was required because the actual gear needs to sit past that former or in line with the former, just like that. So it's sitting just a millimeter or two proud of this former here, so you can just feel that edge. But that's where it needs to sit in order for the nose wheel to actually clear and sit in this little uh, opening down here. So that's what I had to end up sanding out. And uh, didn't have to sand anything down here, but I had to sand this out. Uh, this used to go straight up. Um, like that. So I sanded that back to allow the gear to clear this area. So that had to get done and then I had to sand some additional area out here so the um, the actual flanges of the uh, the gear itself could slide into there. So that's basically uh, the front gear. So very, very happy with that setup. I uh, got the gear door all set up obviously and uh, we're pretty good. We've still got to go through all the bolts and Loctite stuff and uh, mount the servo and everything but uh, that's another step complete okay guys I just got the uh, nose wheel all assembled um, there it is there the servos all connected uh, with the suggested hardware um, now the nice thing about this controller I've mentioned this already is it works through a bus system right so I've got this one cable the gear in cable coming from the uh, X bus output for the JR uh, receiver. Now one thing to note here is the steering output works but it's not powered. So what you have to do is run a, a power lead, a patch cable. I'm gonna make a nice short little one with power box uh, wire and stuff. So a nice little short one from the brake in to the steering in and that's purely just for power that's not for signal or anything um, as soon as I put that in then the uh, bus system for the uh, nose servo works good so we still only have one cable coming from the receiver and that's uh, using the bus system for the brakes for the gear and for the nose steering um, so very very happy with that and I was playing around a little bit with the gyro on this thing works amazing but uh, great, uh, great programming capabilities on this uh, this controller. Super impressed with it. Okay, guys, the gear uh, for the nose is all mounted. <clears throat> so I ended up using the uh, the stock uh, wood screws to mount that. 
uh, was happy with that and uh, everything I think worked out good there um, what else yeah it's basically quite straightforward everything set up um, it's very very tight as far as the um, the installation goes I didn't sand any excess that's for sure so it's nice and snug in there uh, this is basically the front portion of the gear is actually sitting flush with this former and that worked out really really well there's just a hair of a gap back there um, which is fine the uh, nose door closes um, leaves a little bit of space there which is great and also this uh, cover for the gear actually works out really well if it's just set off to the side there so clears uh, the airframe fine and when it turns this way it clears the door fine so that's that stuff I'm not sure what these pieces are for maybe they're a scale uh, something to do with the scale setup oh anyways I got to bring that down actually it's not uh, not sitting in the right spot Okay, so that's all finished. Um, very, very happy with the way that all turned out. Uh, I think it looks absolutely awesome. So very, very good front gear. Uh, very happy with all that. When the gear does retract, uh, it's still sitting about this far away from the top of the, uh, the nose cone, which is good. And uh, so that's the front gear mounted. Um, the pieces I glued uh, yesterday, or in the uh, latter part of this video, nice and solid now. Um, I'll show you guys from the underside. So before there was quite a bit of flex in this area, um, because it's all solid now from that one rod, it, uh, there's no risk of this little piece breaking on it, you know, handling it or an, on an impact or anything like that. So that worked out really well. <clears throat> and... Um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at, guys. Um, the tank uh, plate is all done. So I gotta do a couple things with the tank next. I got to, um, probably should have done this before the wood was installed, but I'm going to put the, uh, the bung in the tank and uh, pressurize that a little bit underneath water. Uh, when you guys are pressurizing your tanks, you do not need to use an air compressor. That is way too much pressure. All you need to do is hook the, uh, the plug up on the tank, uh, make sure one end's plugged, you just put it to your mouth and the, the pressure from your mouth is plenty. If you have any leaks or anything, you'll see the air bubbles come up. So um, I've got to do that with the tank before it gets inserted in the airframe. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to work on here is the plate that's going to mount up here. Now I made it removable because um, if we ever have to get to the strapping or anything, we want to be able to remove that tank. So, um, <clears throat> we're going to have a piece of plywood sitting across here, probably the width of that, uh, that, um, the braces. The, um, smoke tank ends up sitting about there, so we've got a little bit of area there to, uh, to put our screws into the plywood, and then on this side as well, too. And then we're also going to have the uh, the UAT or the uh, bubble trap sitting right here. And I'm probably going to put a cutout in this plate that will allow the bubble trap to sit at a, a nice angle so we'll be able to see it uh, very well. So that's kind of the next steps we're working on here and uh, I'll show you progress from that. 